Welcome to the Movie Goer Society podcast brought to you by Nerdtropolis. I'm your host, Sean Tajwar, the mayor of Nerdtropolis. And joining me once again is my co-host, Drew Munhausen, the professional media and movie mastermind, who is back in space. You're always in space. I don't know. Um, permanent resident of space now, I guess. That's true. It's But I mean... A, I love space stuff. B, I like Star Wars. C, space stuff makes for the best Zoom backgrounds when you're in a pinch. So, you know, it's a combination of all things. Uh, I think you just need to, I uh, don't know, find a way that we can do our podcast from space. I want to join you. I don't know if I can afford the space trips. It's a little I was going to say, pricey. I'm sure that will be very, very cheap <laughs> and budget friendly for Nerdtropolis. <laughs> Nerdtropolis needs to head to space. Uh, that's because we're nerds always want to go and always dreamed of going. But in this podcast, we explore the world of cinema from beloved classics, the latest blockbusters. But for episode 52, yes, 52. We just had our milestone episode of 50 talking about Deadpool and Wolverine. And then we followed up with all the San Diego Comic-Con talk with Marvel and Doomsday. But we have another special episode featuring D23, and we're going to be recapping all the big and small moments from the film and television presentation. Uh, I really wanted to go to D23. I wanted to go back to San Diego Comic-Con. It's just really tough to find the time and resources to go. But uh, I was, I look like a caveman. My beard is outgrown. My hair is outgrown because I have been in a cave the last 48 hours pretty much doing the updates and tweeting about all the announcements that were being made. I like, I worked overtime guys. If you go to troubles.com, there's tons of articles, a lot more are coming your way too. Uh, so I've been working hard for all of you out there, but before we get into all of that, we want to make sure that you can connect with us online. You can find me on almost every single social media platform at Chantage Nertropolis at Nertropolis. And don't forget to visit Nertropolis.com for your daily dose of movie news, reviews, interviews, and trailers. Andrew, where can they find you where you're not contributing to Nerdtropolis? You can find me at Drew Munhausen on all the different social media platforms, logging movies all the time over on Letterboxd, of course, Weekly Here, uh, and the Movie Goer Society. Also, don't forget to catch up on past episodes of the Movie Goer Society and tune into my podcast, Real Insights, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and of course, the Nerdtropolis YouTube channel. A lot is on there. Uh, my Paul Feig, interview is up on there i did a bunch as you can see ninja turtles right here so i talked to the showrunners of tales of the teenage mutant ninja turtles i posted my interview with mutant mayhem director jeff rowe who's also doing the sequel and also the voice cast of tales of the teenage mutant ninja turtles um i pointed this out earlier i did a good job okay i can point now see i always never know where to point but i got the hang of it right here drew right there is a giant box that showed up today Shall we open it? The great folks at Paramount Plus sent me. They love my interview, by the way. They actually complimented my interview with the voice cast. They, it was tons of fun. We talk pizza toppings. We talk Saturday morning cartoons. We talk cereal. We talk New York City. I mean, come on. That's a fun conversation uh, to be had. But I had the perfect topics with the turtles themselves. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, you see that big box behind me. Drew, I think I try to grab this. It's going to be a little difficult. I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to do this. Uh, but I will do my best. Go for it. Well, support and I can I can vamp a little bit while you're getting things ready. So it is a large box with the oh, it has the the turtles of the new show at, right on front front center. You can't miss them. Well, I, I guess I got to talk before the camera shows me because remember, we have it on the, that special view on here that nothing is shown unless I'm talking. So, uh, yeah, great commentary by Drew. But here you go. I'm going to do my best to show this off. This is really difficult to uh, open up. I'm going to do my best. Uh, big box. I'm an OG fan of the Ninja Turtles, I will say. And oh boy, oh, you looks can like see. some splatters of ooze that were on the outside of the box. Yes, and look at that beautiful right there. Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right here. Look at that. It's a shell. It is a turtle shell. Let me see. I grab this. Oh, I can hear and see. Okay, here we go. It is a turtle backpack. <laughs> that That is amazing. It is a backpack, y'all. Look at that. That is awesome. Let me see if I can uh, make some room here. It's a shame you don't have children because it'd be perfect to send uh, somebody to school in, but I know that you'll be wearing it, Sean. So 
I'm trying to make this a quick story. So when I was little, I had a Ninja Turtle backpack that I always took to school. I believe it was maybe a Mikey backpack. It was kind of like, it's not like the shell I have here in my hand, but it was like the sh shell itself and then like their face. And I think it was Mikey, I believe. I'm recalling a lot of orange in it and I loved it. And I don't know where it is. I don't know how we got rid of it. And then for my birthday that I had that Ghostbusters themed birthday, one of my gifts was a Ninja Turtles backpack that's um, somewhere around here, my headquarters and i loved it and so this is just so fitting like my inner five-year-old is loving this so so much and it's actually like a high quality backpack it is wild um it's heavy so i think there's some stuff in here uh let's 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 see what we got in this awesome backpack man first day of school's coming up isn't it see when is the first day of school drew you got little it ones is. for for us uh it starts on Monday and then the other district near us starts on Wednesday. So this week's about to be crazy. So I don't have one starting kindergarten until next year, next year, kindergarten, good old days right there. Uh, a lot's in here. I will say, uh, but we'll start off with some pepperoni, like chips, pe pizza, pepperoni chips, turtles. Love it. Pizza, pizza. Uh, let's see what we got here. Looks like we got a puzzle, I believe, a 550 piece puzzle of a pizza. I mean, that's a lot. That's of pieces. amazing. Let's see. Oh, well, first off, a nice little card here from them. Can't really see. It's really bright out here, but I will read this, I guess. It says, Cowabunga, everyone's favorite Ninja Turtles are kick kickstarting their latest adventure. And this kit has everything you and your family need to join the fun. The all new Paramount Plus original series Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles explores the adventures of everyone's favorite pizza loving heroes as they emerge from the sewers onto the streets of NYC. Leo, Raph, Donnie and Mikey are faced with new threats and team up with old allies to survive both teenage life and villains lurking in the shadows of the Big Apple. All 12 episodes are on Paramount Plus. I binged all of them. They're fantastic. You're going to love it. So Drew... Highly recommend it. Let's see. Okay. So this is that. Oh, man. There's a lot in here. Oh, a nice notebook to take to school with the Ninja Turtles logo on there. It is green. Love it. This is harder than you think. Unboxing things, Drew. I don't know how people do it. It is tough. Uh, tight it corner. Is. <laughs> I don't have a giant table here uh, to do all that. And I guess um, to go with the... I guess I'll put the backpack down somehow. I don't know. This is very hard. I don't know how you unboxers do this. <laughs> Y'all have a great <laughs> setup. <laughs> uh, but there is some colored pencils here. And this is actually a built-in sharpener. So that's really cool. So that goes together very nicely. All right. Maybe this made it a little easier. Okay. We got a Michelangelo action figure right here. So that's really cool. Now you have, have to go get the rest of the set. You can't just have Michelangelo. I know. I have the Mutant Mayhem set. They actually did they they sent that to me, I believe. I'm trying to recall for Yeah, that was sent to me, I believe. I didn't. Yeah, they just sent that to me. So I have a full set over here. I got a lot of stuff from Mutant Mayhem. So yeah, I'll, I'll go get the set. All right, we got some socks. I'll be wearing these. I need to find some Ninja Turtle shoes now that I had as a kid that had like Velcro. <laughs> So that's really cool. And a bag full of masks. Nice. So we're going to become crime fighters pretty soon. You're going to send one my way? Yes. Which color is yours? And don't say purple. Blue. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Take that as take that as you will. I am a big Donnie fan. I'm, a, I'm obviously Donnie. Uh, I love it all of them, but Donnie, I really love. Big techie guy, big nerd. But yeah, awesome. This is so cool. Thank you, Paramount Plus. I had to show that off. I had to do the unboxing here. It's very fitting, especially where this and this is the weekend that the show has dropped and my all my interviews have dropped. So very fitting and very full circle, just like Ghostbusters was, I must say. And now like a good little kid, I'm going to just dump all my stuff in this bag and toss the bag. <laughs> so we can <laughs> keep moving it. But that was fantastic. I love little surprises like that. Um, really means a lot to receive stuff like that. But yeah, very cool stuff. Um, there you go. Tons of TMNT stuff on Neurotropolis. But this episode is about D23. Drew, this is like 
ever since like they kind of slowed down at Comic Con, Marvel and Disney and everyone else over there have used D23 to make not. I think it's every two years, I believe. Is that right? That's what I, it's every two years. I believe that uh, I know this is the eighth one. Does that sound right? Yeah, and it's every two years, so it's not an every year thing. So I, we, now we have to wait two years for the next one, I believe. That's what, uh, what I saw, I think. It's slowly grown, too. Like, I feel like it used to be truly kind of like for the Disney insiders that really wanted to know the ins and outs and do some cool panels and so on and so forth. And now, like, it's not necessarily the same level as, like, a comic con or something well i guess it really is for disney like animation studios but i don't know they're kind of able to split their big announcements now essentially you can expect big announcements from d23 actually tonight as we're recording this they're going to be doing the panel where they have all the disney parks announcements which i'm actually really excited for i like all the theme park stuff like that is my tiktok algorithm is like theme parks and disney parks updates and so on so forth i just find that stuff to be really fascinating um of course that's not necessarily for like the audience of this and wanting to talk about all the movies and the entertainment aspect of it, but I'm going to nerd out for the park stuff. No, that's really great stuff. And actually, as we're talking, they're doing, I think like the, the Hulumation and the Fox studios stuff right now, they did animation earlier for Marvel, but you know, it really kicked off and I kind of have a timeline, but it's not really the most perfect timeline. So I'm going to kind of get us through this uh, as best as I can, because it was a lot drew. Uh, my phone was draining. My fingers were tired. Just getting all this out. Um, I think I don't know if you saw my tweets. A lot of people did, but like it's a, it was a lot. So a lot, of, a lot of things you can see. A lot of things you probably missed because it was just so many updates nonstop. As cool as it would be to be there in the room and and be just part of that vibe as these things are announced, there is part of me that is you know happy just laying in my bed refreshing you know, social media feeds to catch your stories and other people's stories as everything was because that was my entire timeline last night it was like pictures from D23, your Nertropolis stories posting. You were like credit to you. You're keeping up with all of it as it was just rapid fire. It was. And it's so great. Also, like at the end of it, uh, the press team over there really sent a nice recap as well um, for us to utilize, which is great. And a bunch of other emails came through for trailers and stuff like that. But I really think if I recall, you know, Moana 2 was the big kickoff with The Rock uh, and the rest of the, the voice cast there. And so they kind of wanted to, I guess that's coming, that is coming this year, hitting November, theaters on November 27th. And they debuted a new song from the movie, which sounded like a banger from all the videos I saw. Uh, and I think they're really doubling down on Moana 2. Uh at first, it wasn't going to be a theatrical release. It was going to be just a Disney Plus. Uh, with Bob Iger back, I believe they just changed all that and said, listen, we're going to record what re-record what we need to make this ready for theatrical. So that was really the big thing to, to kick off. And while The Rock was there, I don't know if you saw this or something you missed. This is something that was just brushed quickly. A monster jam, like monster truck movie uh, is being made. And that came out of like nowhere. What would you think about that for The Rock to? He's not doing Jungle Cruise too. He's going straight to monster jam. I mean, it sounds in line with the type of stuff that Dwayne's doing these days. I, I mean, I don't have much to say about it. Like, cool, I guess. <laughs> Well, it's a licensing thing, too, with, like, you know, the Monster Jam company. And I don't know when they made this deal or when it was greenlit and, you know, when they decided to use The Rock. Because The Rock's also been busy. He's doing the A24 film, The Wrecking. What is it called? The Wrecking Machine. Now, that I'm extremely excited for, especially directed by one of the Safties. Yeah. So, but he's back, you know, doing Disney stuff. And really interesting after Moana 2 is doing this. And there's also a live action Moana. I was going to say, he's playing the live action Maui too. So he's all over Disney right now. Yeah. So Moana fans, a lot coming your way. Another thing that was um, announced Inside Out 2 was such a big hit, a billion dollars. Is there something you want to add before Inside? Because I'm just jumping around a little bit too. I, I did. I, I just on Moana 2 really quick, which I thought the tra trailer actually looked good and i had some hesitation about this movie just because it was a disney plus series and then wanting to make it into a movie is that going to make it seem lesser than or disjointed but a i think they have confidence in it b the streaming numbers of the first moana are insane moana 2 i mean considering how good inside out 2 did this summer at the box office and is continuing to do i think moana 2 is just going to be gigantic uh well, they this holiday also said season. moana was like the number one 
streamed movie on Disney Plus this year, like this yeah. year, like that is yeah. the wildness. So that's a lot of re- new people watching it for the first time, and a lot of people just rewatching it. Uh, it's on all the time in my house. I mean, Moana is the the go to for young children. I can I can tell you they like to rewatch it a lot. Um, it is a go to. But I will say this: watching the trailer as now, you know, I had. My second daughter was born this year, and in the Moana 2 trailer, it's revealed that Moana has a younger sister. And so as a girl dad of two girls and now Moana having a younger sister, this hit an emotional chord with me and showing this trailer to my daughter this morning where she got to see that Moana now had a younger sister. And it was really special. So, like, I know it's super lame. Like, I hate playing that card, but it, it is like for me this is it's it's going to be a special one and my daughter she loves going to the movies i've taken her to as many things as i can this is probably the first movie in her life that she's anticipating like she has seen the trailers and she asks me almost once a week when are, when can we see moana 2 and uh and she doesn't quite understand the concept of like it's multiple months away uh but she will soon enough but man uh moana 2 going to be huge in in our home yeah, it's gonna be huge. Everyone's expecting it to do really big numbers, especially with Inside Out two making so much money. Everyone was expecting an Inside th- Inside Out three announcement, but that didn't happen. They had something called like Inside Riley's Mind Dream Productions, a new series that explores the movie studio inside Riley's mind that creates her dreams. It's set between the first and second film. Pretty smart idea. I mean, I don't know when they decided to greenlit this one because it, that's a fast turnaround. You know. Um, so, but I'm sure they had it early on. They wanted to do this for sure. And this could lead into, you know, the success into another, a third film and seeing how the series is. What do you think about dream production? I think that's a pretty cool concept. You know, a movie studio inside Riley's mind that creates her dreams. That, that sounds pretty awesome. I'm on board for that. Yeah, I liked Inside Out too, just fine. But I feel like they, you know, they introduced new emotions, but I feel like they didn't introduce as many new concepts within the mind as they could have in the second movie. And this seems like, what I was kind of looking for there. They might be able to have a lot of fun with this. And it could be spin off to another section of the mind that does something else too, and make it into a series instead of a film, you know? And I think that might work out in the long run and really capitalize on the more characters to add and more fun stuff. I saw like a con, I think it was like a, a photo from it and all the movie posters, like on the wall, they're all like, you know, based on real movies in real life and they just kind of play on words and stuff. So that's really fun. Uh, a big announcement that everyone was anticipating and everyone everyone kind of knew it was coming toy story five mm-hmm. um and it's going to be directed by andrew stanton known for wally and it's coming in summer of 2026 i'm a big toy story fan drew love all of them i have the toys i have the og toys i have like the package toys that they redid uh are you a big toy story fan Toy Story is my Pixar franchise. Yes, Absolutely. Um, the first Toy Story and even the second are like, I know that people now are like, oh, the third one's the best. And so far, no, like the first two are the ones that are like amongst my favorite movies of all time. Uh, the third one's great, too. And even the fourth one, I think, is fantastic. But like those first two are special to me. I can watch them endlessly. You know, they, there's a theme that recurs throughout this D23 you know, presentation that I think will, will, I can just say it now because Toy Story 5 is kind of a perfect time to see, to say it. You know, we thought Toy Story was done with four. They really ended it. Like they really ended it. Three, they really ended it. And then four, they ended it again. And now, you know, they've talked about this premise. It's going to be kind of the toys versus tech. It looks like Woody's back with the gang. I don't know how that's going to happen. I'm interested to see what they do. I do trust the folks at Pixar to be creative and have some interesting solutions there. Um, That being said, this was a show of sure bets. Um, Disney, who's had kind of a rough go at the box office in the past, like free inside out too. like they really, really needed a win. And now they've gotten two wins in a row, actually, with Deadpool and Wolverine and inside out, too. So I think they're doing just fine. But like all these things on the horizon, Toy Story 5, um, Moana 2 and some of the other movies that we're going to be talking about, a lot of sequels um, that are coming that they've announced. It just seems like they're in the business of surefire bets right now. And that's fine. Like, I'm fine with more Toy Story. I love Toy Story. It's this is not a complaint. It's just an observation. Right. It's going to be a great one. I really love the story of it. First, you, like you mentioned tech, there's a photo that was officially released of all the toys looking at uh, 
what's what's i guess it's a, what's the girl's name i forget it is oh, uh riley no, bonnie no, bonnie bonnie, name. bonnie. Bo- riley is inside out bonnie i almost said riley too That's just because we were fresh off of that uh bonnie underneath the covers with a tablet and they're like looking sad but also you know the presentation had a bunch of buzz light years and so an army of 50 buzz light years toys are stuck uh in play mode they're malfunctioning and led by a new villain so that's also like the main plot within the subplot being you know kids playing with technology and everything else so that'd be really interesting to see how they combine the two and see how it really works uh i think it's a great idea and i think you'll learn lessons from this i can already tell a lot of lessons will be learned it's also in the key art that they released of Bonnie kind of under the blanket with an iPad and the toys all watching her. It doesn't look like they've aged her up that much from what we can see here. It looks like Bonnie's going to be kind of staying at the same consistent age for now. Yeah, so that'll be a good one. I'm super excited for that. Uh, one that was kind of out of nowhere was this um, this movie called Hopper, Hoppers, and it's a new film. And everyone knew that Pixar or Disney, wherever, are going to announce something new. And this is one of them. And it's where a girl swaps brains with beavers to uncover their secrets. And John Hamm voices the mayor who's trying to destroy their home. And that's coming in 2026. Uh, what I saw on the internet looked great. I think that's fun. I think it's going to do well. If, um, yeah, it's just, this came out of nowhere. And it's very interesting. It's, uh, it's, it's just kind of, I, yeah. I don't know how to I, take it. I'm just it. glad that Pixar is still doing original stories with all the sequels that they're going to be doing too, you know, and Disney Plus series now because because we talked about the Dream Production one, but there's another series that they announced that'll be a direct to Disney Plus that looked there's there's a trailer for and it looked good. Yeah, so this is another one that you know they're trying to do original stuff. Some of their original stuff previously didn't work for me. Um, I didn't like Onward as much. You know, and that that really had really good momentum, but I didn't wasn't a fan of it. And so have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons? Just curious. I actually haven't, but I obviously I'm not a not a Dungeon and Dragon player, but I'm well versed of it. That's that's totally fair, but that movie has a lot of appeal to D&D players. Yes, I know that aspect of it, but I don't know something else about it didn't. I think maybe the voice cast kind of threw me out of there having Star-Lord and Spider-Man. Uh, I think the names are too big for it. Maybe sometimes that can um, all I can hear are their characters outside of the movie. And maybe that was the biggest problem I had for if I, I can recall. Uh, but, you know, if another one they're doing that's original is this one called Elio. And that was something we saw before and it got pushed back. I have no clue what problems it was having. I I don't think it's necessarily that the movie was having problems. I th- personally think that it's that Pixar movies were underperforming in theaters. And I think that if Elio had released this summer as it was supposed to, it probably would have done very poorly. And they smartly put inside out Two in that place. And it made lots and lots of money and has made uh, over a billion dollars and is now like one of the 10 highest grossing movies of all time. So I think that it was a smart move for them. Let it simmer. um, Give it another year see what they want to do there i think it was more of a box office anticipation more so than issues with the movies but i have no idea that's just a guess i mean i like the premise a space fanatic with an active imagination gets beamed up into space and he is mistaken for earth's leader uh and it's just a kid so uh, it seems fun and you know we love space so more spacey stuff the better and picks are doing that i think that'd be really exciting and you know they just announced a. Uh, Zoe Saldana is doing her voice as uh, Elio's aunt. And so that was like the newest thing that they announced for that. And so I, I'm looking forward to that one. I think they're really good. I mean, there's so many announcements. It's just wild that how they come up with the schedule and it's just the company's so big, so much talent behind the scenes working on these and to get them ready for announcements. It's, it, it's just wild. I mean, I guess um, one announcement that people didn't know that was really coming um is brad bird is returning to direct incredibles three everyone is a, an incredibles fan and it's currently in the works and i believe they also announced possibly an, an more coming from that but incredibles three is happening and i guess it's the who does the score for incredibles three it's the one that's doing the fantastic that does a fantastic four score 
Ooh, is it is it Michael Giacchino that does yes, it? Yes. So he he is all he just did the Fantastic Four score. Yep. Uh, so very similar um, concepts between the two. The girls are obviously based off the Fantastic Four in many, 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 many ways. Uh, I, I have to say something here about Incredibles three, which I am excited for because I love the Incredibles movies too. If Toy Story is my Pixar franchise, Incredibles is probably the one right behind that. Um, I'm a big Brad Bird fan in general. Um, going back to, I'm actually didn't grow up with the Iron Giant in the same way that others did, but I I like that movie. I actually just rewatched it this year. Well, it's, um, it's, th- it's 30th anniversary. It came out what 94? Did it come out? It came out in 99. Oh, no, not so 20. Was that 20? 25 years. 25 years. Yeah, 25th anniversary for that one. Just uh, a few days ago. And then you've got Incredibles and Ratatouille, which I think are like in the pantheon of some of the best Pixar movies. I love the fourth Mission Impossible movie that Brad Bird directed when he did his foray into uh, in into live action. And Tomorrowland, it's not perfect, but it has a lot of things that I like in it. And I like some of his direction, but that movie kind of got him put in live action director jail. And then he returned to pixar after that and did incredibles 2 because he he needed a win and uh and now he's doing incredibles 3 which is good i'm glad that he's the one that's doing it but uh i also wish we could get more other you know more live action stuff from brad bird too but you know if he's going to do a third incredibles movie i'm here for that i i want to see more live action but i think his place is really in the animation world oh that's where he came up for sure it's his bread and butter so excited for that uh, another sequel, this is the announcement of the sequel, is Zootopia 2. This is taking way too long. I loved, loved the first Zootopia film. I don't know why it took so long. They had the shorts, right, on, on, on Disney+. Plus. They had some type of Zootopia Plus, maybe it was called. Um, yeah, we. I, I've watched all those because <laughs> I have a daughter that loves Zootopia. So it's it's this great. One it's such we'll, a fun we'll concept. Seeing. But this the film came out in 2016. And it won an Oscar, it says, right? Did it win an Oscar for something? Yeah, I think it won the best animated feature. Well deserved, then. I, I don't recall, but yeah. So I'm excited for Zootopia's that. Zootopia is good. Like, it's it really is an good. adult. It's good. No, it is. So if no one's seen Zootopia, I think it's the equivalent of like watching Toy Story for the first time. How I was like, wow, this is awesome. That's how I felt about Zootopia. And that's why I'm kind of like sad. It's like taking this long for a second film. Uh, but it has Detective Judy Hopps and Nick Wilde find themselves on a twisting trail of a mysterious reptile who arrives in Zootopia and turns the mammal metropolis upside down. And they announced uh, He Who Kwan is going to be playing, I guess, a new character, this a snake. Recent oh. Oscar winner, Ki Hui Kwan. Yes, yes. So that'll be really good. I mean, I- I'm excited for more Zootopia. And yeah, I I think we've all been anticipating a sequel to Zootopia for a while. So this this will be great. And we got another <laughs> another sequel that was announced. I'm just going through this list. And I'm just like, I can't believe it. That many. Frozen 3 was announced and it's coming in 2027. Which this is this was previously announced. And I think it was supposed to be in 2026. And now it's pushed to 2027, which it's like, cool. <laughs> OK. But they also this. OK, this is where they said also a fourth Frozen will be happening as well. That's already been planned. So you get three and four. Maybe they'll go back to back and you don't have to wait another so many years for the next one. But Frozen three in 2027. And then they announced, you know, there's the musical version of Frozen that was filmed will be on Disney Plus. And then they announced that uh, Hercules on West End uh, is coming summer 2025. So they're like really double downing on these um musical adaptations which is great and they're they're great quality when they film them and put them on disney plus and so they're adding hercules to that which is super exciting uh so far out of what we talked about what excites you the most oh goodness i mean honestly my favorite thing from the show is something that we haven't talked about yet so you've put me on the spot here i will say incredibles 3 just because i wasn't expecting it and i think i think incredibles 2 was was very strong um toy story 5 i feel like i would be more excited if they showed us more than this the teaser that we got uh they did a similar teaser with toy story 4 that like didn't really show anything except it did show forky in the first teaser they did but this one like the Toy Story 5 teaser, I mean, it just shows that there's Toy Story 5. 
Y'all be excited at the end of the day. So I'm excited for Toy Story 5. And I know what you're alluding to. And you might, you might have to wait till the end before your excitement goes all over the place. Um, because we're going to go a little bit to the Star Wars universe. Uh, we got to see Star Wars Skeleton Crew. We got to see the trailer. That's premiering December on Disney+. This Plus. was it. This was the thing oh, that I was, was most excited okay. about. Well, then I'll mention later what I thought I was really excited about. But yeah, <laughs> well, your background is from the Skeleton Crew. So I should have known. But man, this looks great. That's all I can say from what I've seen lately from like Disney plus Star Wars stuff or quality. It's been hit or miss. This looks like a winner to me already just based on the trailer. Uh, yeah, this trailer. So I knew, you know, that this had Jude Law on it and I knew kind of some of the basic premise with the kids. And then we saw this trailer and this is what I have been wanting from Star Wars. I want things in the Star Wars universe that's different tonally um you know like really have some creativity and seeing like the essentially the suburbs of star wars i was all in for this tone of like coming of age theme of the 80s like the goonies or a spielberg movie um i just loved the vibe the the kid characters looked great um i'm i'm hoping that watching it that they're not like grading kids like from what I saw, I'm all in on this. Like this just looked right up my alley. I love coming of age stories. I love these kinds of movies from the eighties and it's star Wars, but feels different. I, it just, I was excited to see what this was going to be anyway. And then I saw it and I think it blew my expectations out of the water. And now, especially coming off of the acolyte, which I just kind of fell off of and really didn't find to be all that interesting. I tried to be like a champion of it in the, after the first couple episodes. And, and I think that the, the one action episode was like some of the best star Wars TV we've had, but the series as a whole um, had ups and downs. This, this is the star Wars that I wanted. It looks fantastic. It looks cinematic for a show. And I wish the other stuff we got on Disney plus may it be Marvel or star Wars or anything else be this cinematic. It's directed by John Watts of Spider-Man, you know, so in great, great hands. And it's told through the perspective of four kids. And I love this Goonies aspect of it. It's really fresh and it looks like it could be a feature film, but it's obviously a show. And I'm just excited for that. Like this looks like quality Star Wars and something totally different, but it also feels maybe familiar from, you know, from movies we grew up with and just the aesthetics and, and so forth. Um, so I'm super excited for that one. And then they also touched a bit about Andor season two releasing in 2025. Um, I, everyone loved Andor. I liked it. I think it just not, it's not my type of star Wars. It's great for a show, but it's not my type of star Wars. I like a little bit more action and lightsabers and maybe some really, really fast vehicles more often and, and just more intergalactic aspects I'm of it. I'm with you on this. I think it's it's been hyped as being the best of the Star Wars shows amongst like cr from a critical standpoint. And I can totally see that. But I also, you know, I like lightsabers and so on and so forth. But I did I did find Andor to be good. But I just um, it's not one I'm ever going to like rewatch necessarily. I'll watch season two. Yeah, and it's I don't know. Is it like prison? it's like prison break in space? <laughs> You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but it's really good, you know, but it's not my type of Star Wars. Uh, I'm excited that they announced the Mandalorian and Grogu, Grogu will hit theaters May 2026. Really interested to see where this goes. Um, the same month that, uh, that he will be, that, that, uh, our our guy, Mr. Fantastic himself, he'll be in in Mandalorian, Grogu and Avengers Doomsday, I believe, are out in the same month. So what a month. <laughs> As in for 2026? Yes, I believe so. So well, well, well Fantastic is next year. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm, go I'm ahead. sorry. I'm uh, I, I'm confusing you. It's because yes, I can't find are. my words. No, it's OK. Um, <laughs> What what else is releasing next in 2026? What else is releasing? We got Doomsday. Uh, Doomsday, is. Doomsday. Doomsday is, yeah. And so the funny thing is, you know, for Mandalorian Grogu, he is not in that um uh, costume at all. 
<laughs> right. Pedro uh, Pascal. Pascal. This is no, the issue. Yeah. I couldn't come. I, my, my brain wasn't working. I couldn't That's... come up with his name. Excuse me. Pedro Pascal will come be in Mandalorian name. Grogu, and he will appear in Avengers Doomsday in the month of, of This is the funny May. thing. We don't remember his name, but he's in everything. The last yeah, of I, know, us, right? I mean, that's that's <laughs> we're just overworked this weekend. But yeah, it's it's wild, though. He's in so many things now. Um, he's going to be our Mr. Fantastic. And he's just doing the voice for the Mandalorian. He's now like it's just wild. Good for him, I must say. He has overtaken so many franchises now. Uh, yes. But yeah, 2026 will be his year. The Last of Us is coming next year, though, too, right? So there's just been disney pixar star wars marvel <laughs> like my brain is mush with all these things you're gonna have have me remember somebody's name like good luck yeah i'm I doing know. my best here <laughs> no but fair enough uh are you excited for more grogu we're not gonna get to know who where he came from i heard like i don't know what answers we get in this film and what the point is of this movie i love the mandalorian i love seeing grogu do his thing awesome but like, where is this taking us? I'm just a little this lost is, on that aspect. It, this is a tough one. I, I'll, I'm here for it. I'll, I'll see it. It's Star Wars. This is going to be the first Star Wars movie that we've had in theaters in uh, in seven years. Almost, you know, we got the Rise of Skywalker came out in 2019 and uh, just due to the state of Star Wars. And I think some big missteps with how they were planning out the franchise, we have now had a big lack of movies of Star Wars movies. There's been plenty of shows which are, you know, varying in quality, but no movies. And Mandalorian Grogu is going to be the first Star Wars movie in theaters in almost seven years. And uh, which I mean, I know we've gone longer than that with Star Wars, but, you know, when Disney acquired it, the whole plan was we're going to have a Star Wars movie every year that quickly didn't work. And now we've had this big lull as they're trying to get things figured out. And I think with the success of the Mandalorian show, they're, making essentially what could have been the fourth season into a movie, I, I suppose, um, which I'm interested to see. I'm I'm one that I loved the first season. I, or I really liked the first season of The Mandalorian. I loved the second season and I was significantly less enthusiastic about the third season. So, you know, we'll we'll see what they do here. You do this film, you see how it goes. You really have to convert this this part of Star Wars, but Mandalorian and or Grogu into an, animation. This can't go live action anymore. I don't see how much longer people can entertain Grogu if we don't get any real answers or even see him age or anything like that. If you want to kind of just freeze him for his cuteness, you guys go animation and just tell stories that way, maybe. Because I don't know what other animated shows we're getting other than the young. Is it called the Young Jedi and the Tales of? Is are the really the preschool? Well, Young Jedi is like the preschool version, right? Yeah, yeah, Young Jedi. And then there's um, the Tales of, which is really good. So like, we That's don't have like a, the short form storytelling, but we don't have a true do. sh show since like Clone Wars and everything else that followed afterwards. So I don't know if we're gonna get that type of series back, and maybe it follows the Mandalorian and Grogu. Yeah, yeah, we'll but, see. But I'm, I'm mean, excited. I'm gonna see. I just want answers about Grogu because it really opened a whole <laughs> can of worms, and we didn't really get much from there. And Pedro Pascal, how much longer can he really voice? I mean, I guess he's gonna get busier and busier. I don't, I don't see that happening. Well, I would think we might see his face a little bit more in this movie. I don't know. I mean, he's gone through a lot to, you know, be a Mandalorian again and not remove the helmet. But I mean, we'll see. So you really think they're gonna show his face? I don't know. I mean, it's hard to have Pedro Pascal top build in your movie and never show his face. Well, people complain when they saw it. It'll be interesting. That'll be a great test to see what Star Wars happens in the theaters because it's been a while. And uh, th that's a real shame. Uh, before we jump into some other big stuff, I do want to mention the next Avatar film. Fire and Ash. What do you think about that title for the third installment? I am an Avatar head over here. But you can make fun of me all you want. I'm I'm all in on the Avatar universe and James Cameron, what he's doing here. Give me the fire Navi. Uh, this logo looks great. I saw some of the promotional images and what they're doing with this new with the, some of the new clans they're introducing. I loved the way of water. Yeah, I, I'm I'm excited for for more Avatar next year. December 19th, 2025, it releases. I mean, if James Cameron's not doing Avatar films, what else is he going to do? He's not doing anything else. 
I mean, is it a, is this a good or bad thing that he's so focused on this Avatar franchise? But I mean, he's made it into now it's in parks. I mean, it's he's made a brand out of it, which is if really there's anybody that deserves to be able to just do whatever he wants to do, um, you know, I guess it's James Cameron. I would love to see him doing other things, of course, but I think he's this is what he wants to be doing. So, you know, uh, more power to you. Yeah, more power to him for doing that. Um, one thing this is a show. Not... I think this is a show of me saying more power to you a lot. Oh, <laughs> uh, we'll keep tabs on the counter for that one. Uh, one other Pixar animation project I did not talk about was Win or Lose, which is like an animated Bad News Bears. Um, yeah, that's a... the show we, we referred to as being the first official Pixar show, like animated show. Yeah, so that's coming out this year, December 6th. And yeah, it's an animated... Bad news bears, pretty much is what I how I say it. Yeah, it looked but, fine. Yeah, but more stuff on Disney Plus is the best. I think that's been the problem lately is nothing of new additions. So, and we're getting price increases with with less stuff coming out, which oof, is unfortunate. That's a whole different subject there. <laughs> uh, I guess we could jump into some Marvel stuff. I mean, there's a lot of Marvel stuff here and there. Um, I guess one of the big things was. They showed Harrison Ford Hulk out to Red Hulk. So um, if you're on Twitter, you can see that, like where he's behind the podium as the president and becomes the Red Hulk. I thought that was a cool shot. Are you excited for this new Captain America movie? I am. I am excited for it. I, I, I um, yeah, I, I've, I, I really liked Falcon and Winter Soldier. I've been wanting to see more of Anthony Mackie as, as Cap and what they're going to do here. I think that there's a lot... I think the trailer looks kind of like I don't want to say formulaic, but it looks in line with kind of Captain America movies and what they're doing here. But I think that there's going to be more to this movie than what we've seen in the trailers. And I'm kind of interested to see where they go with it. It's about time we got this film. I, I just feel like everything's getting has was delayed for obvious reasons and reasons that are out of everyone's control because of things that were happening in this world. But looking forward to this one coming out very soon. February 14th, 2025. So far, I like it. Everything that they've been showing us. Um, Red Hulk, we're getting it. We've got to be getting a Green Hulk at the same time. There's no way there's a Red Hulk and not a Green Hulk. I mean, uh, there are going to be some surprises, I feel like. And so we have that one to look forward to. We also, coming real soon, is Agatha All Along. I wasn't sure about this and why, but after watching the trailer, it looks like a of quality and that's really what i'm looking forward to i don't care if it's like people say oh why are we getting this as long as it's a quality show and serves a decent purpose and entertains and like i said quality is what we're looking for i'm all for it and the trailer the new trailer that dropped looked really good and that's coming just really soon september 18th and that's coming to disney plus what do you think about that one i have a hard time getting excited for this one at all to be honest with you like i, I just this is you know when we got into the crux of all the Disney plus shows being announced and we're getting an Agatha Harkness series. And I just don't know if I really care that much. Um, I'll probably tune in. That being said, Aubrey Plaza being in this is what has me the most interested. Like I'm, I'm all about Aubrey Plaza. Everything really looks good. Everything I've seen. So I have no complaints and I'm looking forward to watching that. And, but I do wish we could binge it. I'm a binger now. And so it's going to be tough week to week, unless it's fan. If it's like really, really, really good, it'd be I'm up for it. But I think they dropped like the first two episodes when it comes out. So we'll see how those two line up. Um, also, they did a little bit of Fantastic Four stuff. Nothing too crazy. Um, but you see the logo reveal and the costume for Johnny Storm, which is like very. Like OG from the from the 90s movie a little bit. So it's got that blue and that white, but that's just his costume. If you saw the promo art that was released when they announced the cast, the. Um, there's Mr. Fantastic and Sue Storm have a different costume. And then Johnny, you really can't see what he's wearing, but he's wearing, I think, a jacket in that. And underneath might be that outfit. But we just kind of got like an actual, very comic booky, accurate Fantastic Four logo. And I think this is probably the most exciting film for me. It's giving me like how excited I was when I, the first Iron Man came out. Like, I'm with you. I'm I'm extremely excited. For this. I, think, I think the trailer or the test footage they showed at D23 was the same footage that they had shown back at um, at San Diego Comic Con. I don't know if there if there was much other new, like you said. That. No, they showed the cast uh, on set, like a little greeting 
from right. that. Um, but I think this movie is going to be a new era for Marvel Studios and the MCU. It's going to revive our feelings, how we felt when the first Iron Man came out. It was new, something we haven't seen before. And yes, we've got so many Fantastic Four films, so many. But what I've seen and heard and everything else, it's so different, so fresh, so unique. And it's made with a lot of love, it seems like. And that's what's been taking so long that this is really going to surprise us and really lead the way into what to expect with a super cosmic, wild, multiverse, Marvel MC, like Marvel Cinematic Universe we're going to be seeing. Like, I feel like once this comes out and once we get Doomsday, Secret Wars, the gloves are off. You know, we saw that Deadpool and Wolverine. The gloves are going to get off completely. And we're going to, it's like we're watching a live comic book in theaters, just how crazy these storylines are going to get and the team ups and everything else, which is super exciting because they're building something different, I feel like, at the same time. Because there's also rumblings of what the Spider Man movie is going to be and what Doomsday and what the connections are to everything and to, uh, the connection to Daredevil Born Again um, that we'll talk about um, as soon as we're done with this. But Fantastic Four. It's coming. I mean, I'm just excited. I, I can't I wait. Yeah, this is this is I'm I'm already all in on this. Um, it would take a lot to make me not excited for this one. Yeah, so we're looking forward to that one. And then, like I said, Daredevil Born Again, they showed that. I mean, they didn't post this online at all. But if you go online, there's some stuff there. Um, the Punisher Returns and this show is a extension from the Netflix show. So they're not ignoring any of that and that's arriving march 2025 and they said season two is filming soon and this one will have the white tiger appearing and you'll have kingpin and you have foggy you have everyone returning and i think the premise for this one is um there's a new player in the game and it's not really kingpin kingpin is running for mayor it seems like from what i saw um he's trying to be very uh trying to be a good man i guess in some aspects a good powerful dangerous man i guess uh but i'm just excited that we're getting daredevil back in marvel and everyone else saw like we can continue what netflix was doing but make it our way at the same time and make it better and elevated and this might be the best season we get from what we've seen before yeah i'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about daredevil born again i'm excited for it um there was that news uh however long ago of the like them having to basically scrap what they had done and start over on a lot of it but i i'm hoping that that means that they're like really trying to make this good and and you know make sure it's of quality and not just releasing what they do so i i so i, I have hopes for it in that regard and I, I like this cast and I know that they're all excited to be able to do more daredevil and, and get more Charlie Cox in the suit and so on and so forth. So I'm i uh, I'm cautiously optimistic for this, but the fact that they're already announcing a second season, especially bodes well for the first season. It does. And I'm just curious how this ties into Spider-Man in, in any aspect. Cause I always see, you know, daredevil showed up or Murdoch showed up in there and there's a lot of ties between daredevil, the characters that they cross and stuff like that. I do want to stay on this Marvel talk because there's still a lot left to talk about, but I'm going to go dive into some of the animation stuff. Uh, probably a quick rundown on most of it, but um, these what you is, can almost kind of drill through because I feel I don't have much to add on any of these. No, I know there's some other what ifs and so on. Yeah, we'll just go through those. But like, what if season three will be the final season for what if? So I haven't watched all of them. I don't know if they really affect the MCU stuff, but I think they do, right? They like their canon in, in their ass, you know, certain aspects. Uh, but they have fun with it. You know, the new season will have Moon Knight, White Vision, Ironheart, uh, and and more. So and it'll be the final season. So we'll see where that goes. Marvel Zombies, four episodes, TVMA. Excited for that one? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that'll be a fun one too. And they're using some of the cast from the films. Um, X-Men 97. Season two, they'll be wearing the Grant Morrison designed suits. That, that made my eyes and ears perk up when they announced that. I, I love that those suits, so I'm excited for that. I'm excited for more X-Men 97. What a masterpiece that was. Like That's something I was excited to watch week to week, and I was okay because I would process it for the week uh, because they build so much emotion, and each episode truly stands on its own. It's it's so wonderful. Um, finally got some news. Eyes of Wakanda is a four episode uh, series. And on top of that, um, Iron Fist will be making an appearance 
in the Wakandan history. So it's a Iron Fist. We don't know who it is. Um, also, we didn't talk about, but there's also the Iron Heart show coming out. I don't remember recall when that is, but that is happening as well. And Ryan Coogler is a producer on that as well. Who's I think that's do- supposed to be next year. At some point. I mean, it should be. It looked the trailer looked cool. What I saw. So I'm up for it, wherever that is. Uh, but I was actually more excited for the, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, which was announced so long. And I think it was called, I thought it was called like Spider-Man freshman year. I thought it was originally it, Yeah, called. I think that is what they initially announced it as. Uh, they showed a picture of like all the characters showing up and it's a big, like big collage of like almost anybody and everybody in the Spider-Man universe you could think of. That's like really prominent. Um, Dr. Strange will appear. There is a Venom. Um, there is a Norman Osborn voiced by Coleman Domingo. Brilliant. I mean, that's awesome. And they're saying this storyline, it's obviously an alternate universe timeline, whatever you want to call it. And this Norman Osborn is like what Iron Man and Tony Stark was to Tom Holland, Spider-Man. So he's like a mentor and a friend, but some of the things he does really isn't what Spider-Man likes i guess just the way he does things is a little different and we'll see what happens with that but they're definitely like a mentor relationship and i'm super excited for that of of the animated projects that were announced this is the one that i'm most hyped for i love the art style kind of looking like the classic steve ditko art of the 60s um but there's modern characters that we're seeing depicted in this art so i think that they're really going to be able to play around in this in the sandbox and and have some fun so this i think will be really cool taking too long to get this i'll tell you for a spider-man property it's taking too long and the next what's Spider-Man, the release on this one what's it supposed, when it's supposed to come out that's a good question i don't recall i don't even know if they said there's a lot of stuff they said coming soon yeah whatever that means uh this and x-men 97 i think those are the two i'm very excited for um so that is the marvel stuff pretty much there's a handful of other big stuff guys we're not tr- true done i know we're going on for a while but there's still a few more things i do want to touch base on. uh i might have missed some maybe drew will correct me towards the end but um mufasa the lion king prequel set to release this year december 20th watch the new trailer it's really good like i actually like the live action remake what it's not live action we're saying live action is easier, but it's like CG animated, looks realistic, whatever you want to call it. I like the remake, but it's like beat for beat the original. And I just just loved Lion King as a kid. So I'm always going to like everything you give me. But this one looks like it has a great story to tell about Mufasa and Scar, who's not Scar yet. He's a prince. Mufasa is like the, the outcast, actually, that's, you know, coming into this. Um, what do you call a lion's community? A pack? Is it? <laughs> no, it's something. Pride? Is it the pride? The, the pride? pride? <laughs> the pride? Yeah, that sounds right. So apparently Scar was like the, the the future prince, future king. He's a prince, future king of this pride. But um, he befriends, befriends Mufasa, and they have some type of wild adventure and stuff like that before they become enemies. And we get to see. But it looks like they're telling young Simba this story. Is that, did you see the trailer for this one? Yeah, it looked like it was kind of, it's going to be bookended with like Timon and Pumbaa and Simba, you know, kind of telling the story or being told the story and looks like they'll be kind of narrating or present throughout. Yeah, so it'll be interesting of how it folds, unfolds in front of us, but I like what I saw between Abufasa and Scar and it looks great. They gave them a lot more emotion. They're like smiling and stuff like that and you can tell how they're feeling. They're just not walking and someone's doing a voiceover over like animal planet or something like that or discovery channel it's something um a little more fun um so i'm excited for that one the thing Uh, that has me most excited about about mufasa is nothing to do with the the story or animation itself but it's just barry jenkins involvement um you know barry jenkins who directed moonlight and one best picture and then also did the movie if beale street could talk um which is a movie that i love and this is the first movie that he's directed since if beale street could talk came out in 2018 and uh props to barry jenkins good job getting your you you know you're cashing that disney check you know cashing in on your on your oscars and 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 you know, make some Disney money while you're at it. And, but I'm hoping that he brings some really interesting storytelling and ideas to this. 
Um, I don't know who was asking for a Lion King prequel about Mufasa, but, you know, we're getting it and comes out around the holidays. I'm sure it's, it's going to do fine, although I'm not huge on the Favreau directed live action Lion King. If I'm going to watch one, I'm going to watch the original animated one. I love that movie. I love the animated. They were saying Favreau was so in awe with the technology and doing something new. It was groundbreaking. I will tell you that film is groundbreaking um, and that he kind of just ignored or just didn't think about the emotional aspect of it. And I I really like his Jungle Book movie. I like the Jungle Book movie a lot more than I like the live action, in quotes. Uh, Jungle Book was fantastic Lion and that King. really let, laid down the foundation for what we have now. But like you mentioned, this it's all about the story. And I'll say it one more time. It introduces Mufasa as an orphaned cub lost and alone until he meets a sympathetic lion named Taka who becomes Scar. And so... And and is this the first... So, you know, obviously over the past decade plus, I think starting back when they did Alice, uh, Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, you know, they've been slowly, steadily going through the Disney animated archives and remaking them as, you know, almost beat for beat as live action movies. Um... You know, we just had Little Mermaid last year and we've had, you know, Aladdin and Lion King came out in the same summer a few years ago. Um, Is this the first prequel or sequel to one of the anime? No, because there was a sequel to the Alice in Wonderland movie. But anyways, you know, we're getting the, the that's what has me interested here, right? Like, at least I know this is not going to be beat for beat, just a remake of the Lion King in live action. This is a different story. A story that origins. we don't know about, too. Like, we, this is something brand new. There was never a, a story about Mufasa that I I can think of that was told in any aspect or mentioned. Uh, I'm not sure if, like, the animated sequels mentioned a little bit of it, but this is the first time we might be seeing it. And I'm down for it, you know, Um uh, I think it's just interesting because I didn't know about like Mufasa being an orphan cub did not know that at all. So yeah, it, it yeah. intrigues me right there. Um, a lot more of those remakes are coming, but freaky Friday too, though, is the big one. That's um, obviously not a live action remake or anything, but it's a sequel to the Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan film. And it's called freakier Friday and it's coming in theaters to theaters 2025. I can't believe this is being made because I thought it was all talk and just like, oh, for talk shows, we're going to say we want to do a sequel. They made it happen and it's coming. And, you know, it's like our generation, I think, that's the most excited for it. Um, And I am, too. Like, it's kind of cool that Disney is willing to take a risk on something like this and, um, yeah, bring back the original cast and then kind of continue the story. I haven't seen the 2003 movie with Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan, so I'll have to catch up on that before this one. It's probably it's not high on my priority list, but I will I will watch it before the sequel comes out because I'll see this. Yeah, I think it would do pretty good. I'm surprised it's not like a Disney Plus movie and they're really um, doubling down on this. Um, Also, I think there's three more I want to talk about. Lilo and Stitch was what I thought you were super excited for because we were talking <laughs> earlier. <laughs> I wanted it to be my background, but th- th- that's that's as about as much as the excitement went, just because I thought it would be funny. But my head blocked most of Stitch, and it didn't. It did. It just didn't work out. I'm sorry, everyone. Well, we got our first look at this. I, we're gonna say live action Stitch it's CG, but it, it's gonna be a live action movie in Hawaii with real people, and there's gonna be aliens and stuff like that. And he looks great. And it's the same personality. I loved the little video that we saw and it's coming theaters next summer. They've been filming this. I've been covering this for a while, actually, with all the casting news and so forth. But what do you think about Stitch? I thought he looked fantastic. And people are complaining, oh, it's like the Sonic thing. I'm like, no, it's not. It's exactly what he looks like. He looks like Stitch. He looks like Stitch. Uh, Maybe they're saying the color palette, but like you, you don't want something so vibrant. And you have to see what it looks like against the backdrop of Hawaii. If you're if if you're online and you're complaining about the way this, you know, CG version of Stitch looks. If if you're listening to this and that's how you're spending your time, um, please go touch grass. So <laughs> that's, that's all I have to say. Uh, I'm excited for that. I think it'll be really good. Uh, it'd be interesting, though, that how they really execute it. It's going to be a really great, great film. I'm afraid at the same time, because uh, I think this might be the riskiest animation to live action that they're doing. Um, that's just my two cents, but some people think this next one is a risky one too. Um, Snow White, <laughs> uh, the classic tale will be retold 
in live action form. Coming theaters March 21st, 2025. Saw the trailer. We have the trailer on Neurotropolis. I think it looks great, but I've seen and this all these stories where it comes to Beauty and the Beast, Cinderella, everything else like that. I've kind of had enough of the classic tales. And I'm really I'm ready for this to come out and move move on. I yeah. thought this trailer looked like absolute garbage. Uh, um, I'm I'm sorry to say it. Uh, this looked about as you live gotta be action. Careful, Drew. Someone's going to give you a poison apple. We don't want this happening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I this was looked about as live action as uh, Mufasa or the live action Lion King looked. I mean, it, this almost looks even more CG than those, with the exception of Rachel Zegler and, and Gal Gadot. Here, here's the thing with this: I love Rachel Zegler. I am a huge fan of her. I think that she. I think she's a really interesting up and coming movie star. You know, obviously she was discovered by Spielberg and put in the West Side Story movie that he made. Um, and she's only made a few movies since then. Right. She was in Shazam Fury of the Gods, which was a bad movie, but I liked her in it. Like I thought she was a shining light in that movie that otherwise was not very good. And I liked her in uh her role was a little weird and there are a lot of there's a lot of weird things about the movie, but I liked her in The Hunger Games, uh, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. So she is young you know she's 23 she's in in tune with like the tiktok crowd and and you know like uses her social media often and interacts with fans and so i think like as a young movie star i i like her and think she's a good presence and i don't mind her casting in this and she's the one thing that has me hopeful because i think she's just extremely charming and has a lot of charisma but i just think everything around her in this trailer just looked unfinished or bad um it just looked so animated and maybe that's what they're going for i thought the dwarves looked terrible um gal gal Gadot i thought looked great like her in the evil queen outfit and the crown like play obviously it looks like she's excited to be evil i thought she looked great but i i this i'm i'm with you as far as like i these remakes are stale and i just i just thought this looked to me it's very colorful but colorful did not make it look good one of the og the stories out there um Get it told this way and get it over with. <laughs> you know, I'm just, it's, it's not as fresh as it could be. Well, this uh, one's had a lot of production issues too. Like they finished filming this movie back in 2022 and they, they, there's a lot of a drama lot of around this, a issues. lot of controversy. I don't want to get into it, but there's a lot yeah, of stuff nah. you can look up that's pretty wild and uh, it's sad and unfortunate, but it's what we're getting and it's coming uh, next year. I will say this before I think we're going to wrap it up uh, with one last one. But for all of those saying out there that believe everything you read on the internet and post these things, and I'm just like, I don't know who your source is, but I can tell you that's not happening. Everyone was saying there was going to be an announcement for a live action Atlantis movie. <laughs> um, some fake trailer was on TikTok. People believe everything that they see. They post on their Facebook. People I know personally, I'm just like, what is wrong with you? Like, don't try to say, oh, this is really happening. I knew it. I'm like, it's not. It never happened. Shame on you for for believing everything out there. Things like this don't get leaked like that. Um, if Atlantis movie is coming out, not saying I'm the first person to know, but I will be the first one running in the streets, screaming it top of my lung because I would be so excited if they did that. Um, not just because I'm a fan of that movie, the animated movie, which is great. I'm a big fan of Atlantis and I believe it's, it's there. It's somewhere, <laughs> you know? Um, with the Loch Ness Monster, with Nessie and Atlantis, I am out there searching for it. Those are the two things I search for uh, out there. Uh, so don't believe everything you read on the on the web, folks. I'm just going to say that. But I think there's one last announcement. And then, Drew, if there's more, we I'm more than welcome to talk about it. But Tron Aries. Another Tron film. I am a big, big, big Tron fan. I love the original. I thought it's so cool. I love everything about it. Uh, the sequel I thought was amazing. And uh, I think it's one of the best. I'm not saying one of the best films ever made based or a best sequel, right? I'm not saying it's like a masterpiece, but man, they put a lot of heart and just everything into that film and made something cool. Like it's just cool from the Daft Punk soundtrack to the aesthetics to everything. Like that's what I love about the Tron. It's something cool about it. 
and retro and fun and it just all has all my vibes you know um but that is coming october of 2025 jeff bridges is returning which is cool i'm curious to know exactly how the story is going to work i know it's about them coming into the real world and it's led by um jared leto and he's playing um what is he playing? He's Aries. Playing Aries. But like what they are, no, but what they call them, they're just, he's a, not AI, an AI or program or whatever you want to call it. it comes into the real world, but I'm excited for the light cycles, excited for everything else. But what was so cool. And I knew, I don't know. I had a weird feeling. This was going to happen. Daft Punk is retired. Who are they going to bring? Nine inch nails is doing the score soundtrack for this movie. Brilliant move. Like that was, I don't know, like perfection, I thought. And well, I feel like Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross are kind of on a hot streak right now. Like, obviously, they score a lot of movies, but actually, we, you know, again, talking about bringing it full circle, they did uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, Mayhem movie, and that Challengers, score is amazing. Right? And they did Challengers. And Challengers this year, Challengers had an amazing score. So I'm like, yeah, I, I agree. If you're, you know, Obviously, if Daft Punk's not going to come out of retirement for another Tron movie using uh, uh, Reznor and, and Atticus Ross and Nine Inch Nails. Is, but see, is there's a difference a here, move. though, because it's not the it's not like them individually, because that's usually how we see it. It's specifically Nine Inch Nails. So that right. should also tell you about the tone and the excitement for new stuff from Nine Inch Nails. Right. And so that's what the cool aspect of it. It's not just Atticus Ross and Trent Reznor making stuff for a film. It's them really going in and making a soundtrack or something or score for this film as Nine Inch Nails, you know? And I think that's the most exciting part of it. And when they did that whole, you, there's a video presentation of it. I mean, the music- I saw where the logo <laughs> appeared. It looked really cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like harmony right there. You know, I love it. Great synergy right there. I'm really excited for Tron. Um, Probably my most anticipated film out of the whole list. Outside of I loved Tron Legacy. Marvel's it's a shame it underperformed. Um, because I think it's good. I, I gotta say it, it was almost like it was a masterpiece, especially in 3D. Like it was just the most cool experience for something that's not a major IP. It wasn't a major IP, you know. Tron was a bust when it first came out, and they made this really amazing aesthetic, great cast, cool vibe movie with a great soundtrack, great story. And it's a shame it's taken this long to get a sequel, but I'm very curious to see where this story is going to tell us. But great cast, you know. Directed by Joseph Kaczynski, who went on to do Top Gun Maverick, you know, a couple of years ago. It's super successful. He's got the Brad Pitt F1 movie coming out next year. That looks great. Who did it? Legacy. And now who's, did we say who's directing Aries? I don't even know. Oh, it's, um, yeah, I have it right here. Uh, Joe, Joakim Ronning. Hmm. All right. If I'm reading this, why is there certain um <laughs> it's the director of the Pirates of the Caribbean and a maleficent mistress? Young 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 woman in the sea was his movie. Okay. Well, well <laughs> listen. You know. Well, okay, he did Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men, uh, was it Dead Men Tell No Tales, and then he did the second Maleficent. So he knows big movies, right? And then Young Woman and the Sea is an excellent film. I, I haven't seen it yet. I, I keep on seeing Plus. it pop up okay. on the Disney Plus carousel, but I have not watched okay, it. Okay, watch it and enjoy it. I recommended it to everybody. Me and my fiance loved it. My parents loved it. It's just an amazing story, a true story. And he did a really great job with this, this with everything because it's it's actually very different of a film I've never seen in a long time. It's a period piece too, but it makes it fun, makes it engaging, and nothing is boring about it. And so that's also the important thing when it's something like that. Uh, so I have high hopes. It's, it's really a per, uh, a director from, you know, that you wouldn't think that would be doing this film, but I think it'd be a good fit and yeah, more Tron. So that's all I'm excited for. And Drew, I have, yeah. I have mixed feelings on Jared Leto in general. However, him as a sophisticated AI straight out of the Tron universe coming, you know, and the way the outfit looks like that's kind of the type of roles I want to see Jared Leto doing. So like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on this light cycle of a journey for sure. Yeah, this is perfect for him. I like it when he goes into genres that fit him perfectly. And I thought this was great. I don't know if he got offended when I said, Oh, 
We don't want 30 Seconds to Mars to do the soundtrack. We want Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> Actually, to be That's honest, funny. I'll be honestly, so, some of the 30 Seconds of Mars stuff would fit with Tron. I'm not going to lie. I will give him some uh, props on that. I, I'm a big fan of 30 Seconds of Mars. Uh, and I'd be interesting if it, like one song makes it somehow or something, because um, it would work in general. But yeah, that is mostly everything that happened at D23. That's um, everything I had on my list. I mean, we covered a lot. We did cover a lot. Uh, I'm just going one thing. I don't, I mean, I'm, I know there's a couple of things we missed. I don't recall exactly what they are, but they are. What, oh, it's like Descendants Zombies World Collide Tour, which is really cool. It's like a live tour with stars from Zombies and Descendants. So that'll be really exciting to see. Percy Jackson Olympians season two is now filming. Um, and then there was like a little behind the scenes trailer for that. Um, I think there's a couple other things, but you know, oh, like the greatest showman. I saw something about that. Um, oh yeah. They're doing a, a live stage production of that too. Huh? Yeah. So there's a lot and it's funny. This is all from one company, which shocks me. Like this is amazing and cool and just wild at the same time that it's this giant company doing all this stuff. And we didn't even talk about parks and the other stuff. Cause they had the Hulu, um, panel and they're talking, um, family guy, Simpsons, everything else. And, not sure whether surprises would come if any surprises come out of that one or just talking about it. And then you have the avatar world. I mean, it's just wild um, with everything top. If you had to pick one thing you're the most excited for. Oh, right now I'm going to stick with skeleton crew because it's on the horizon. It's coming out this year. We have a trailer for it that looked good. I just feel like I can invest in that. I can get excited for it justifiably so so that's i'll stay with skeleton crew uh i'm gonna say i mean it wasn't announced here if we're if we're doing it i don't know what you consider based on announcements but no i will say fantastic four is what i'm yeah, excited for yeah that's i mean especially second, as far outside as marvel, marvel tron, goes, that's tron so tron would be my second up for me uh i just got a little email simpsons season 35 to launch october 2nd on disney plus um maybe that's all that's happening but um yeah, there's a lot more to talk about, I'm sure, next time, but we'll see. Uh, but for all of you tuning in, don't forget to subscribe and share all the Nerdtropolis content. Baby, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, the website itself, uh, tons of stuff coming your way. Uh, I'm going to chug probably five waters after this. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, I got to keep hydrated with all the stuff coming out. But once again, Drew, where can they find you? You can find me at Drew Munhausen on all the different social media platforms over on Letterboxd, Login Movies, um, of course, here weekly at the Movie Goer Society. And thank you if you tuned in and listened to us. Like sometimes with these kinds of shows and going over announcements, it's a lot of Sean and I. Like we don't talk about all these announcements in advance. It's not like we know each other's thoughts. Like we're really going through our, our thoughts. Um, you know in real time. In real so time, thank it's you. raw. There's no planning, there's no organization. It's what we can pull up. Are you available? Yes. Am I available? Yes. Okay. Let's jump on and see what we can push together. We try to be as organized and helpful as possible and inform informative as possible. And uh, hopefully we are, but you know, everything is on the website that we talked about and you know, it's always fun. This is therapy for us. So thank y'all for joining us. Yeah. Well. Thank you. Thank you Our for listening. Session. Thank you for being with us on the journey as we go through it. And hopefully you agree with our thoughts and anticipation. Maybe you disagree if you do, comment and youtube will probably interact with you but yeah just you know just thank you yes thanks again for joining us for another episode of the movie ghost society once again i'm sean tosh for the mayor of the and we'll see you at the movies <laughs>